All right, what's going on, everybody? Broken Games HDR back at it again with another video. So, been a very eventful day. You know, a lot of news got the uh, the Twitter a buzzing. A lot of people tweeting. A lot of people talking about stuff. We got the you know it was a Dead Space gameplay official trailer. There was that that looked great, and we got uh, Herman Holtz doing um, some. Uh, you know, an interview, which is what I'm going to talk about in this video. Video, you got CD Projekt Red acting like a bunch of bozos and announcing five projects. And apparently, I don't, it may be a jump for me to say not learning their lesson, but just announcing sequels and projects in very strange and odd ways, getting getting ahead of themselves, in my opinion. But that's my feelings about that. That's not what we're going to talk about. So. Herman Holst did an interview with a French media personality um, named Julian Shees or Shies. Not sure how you pronounce his last name. Um, I got a big following, never really heard of him, but uh, Herman Holst did a, did a short little interview with him, about 30 minutes. And we got some, uh, you know, interesting statements from, from him. You know, anytime uh, Phil Spencer, Herman Holst, Jim Ryan do an interview, there's always something to talk about from those interviews and with, with you know I like as I've said many times I like the direction that Herman Hulse and Jim Ryan overall have been taking uh the PlayStation division in but there's always there's always it's always a like somewhat of a mixed bag overall it's it's good and I like what they're doing but there's it's like it's like I gotta treat them like a pet or a, like a like a dog right there's some good things then there that they do but there's some bad things they do that I don't like. And I always got to like tell them bad. Don't do that bad, you know? And when they do something good, it's like I got to give them a treat to give them positive reinforcement. And, and when they do something bad, I got to give them negative reinforcement and yell at them. So a few different um, highlights from this interview, right? So he said, I think he was specifically talking about first party when he made this statement. Um it could be first party and a few third party partnerships, second party, whatever. But he said there are 25 PlayStation projects or games in development and over half of them are new IPs or new ideas. That's a good thing. You know, they got, what is it, 19, uh, 19 official studios. Uh, some, uh, a couple of those might be support studios. But either way, they have um, about, yeah, he said 25 projects in development. and that. That sounds uh, logical, right? So that's that's a good thing. And be over them, uh, over half of them being new IPs, that's good because, you know, we are at like this crossroad where, you know, the PlayStation 5 generation was picking up from where they left off with the PS4, which meant a lot of sequels. So people want to see all the new ideas, uh, you know, now that we're getting into the third and, you know, third year and it's going to be the... And after that, the fourth, that's when you really want to start seeing the new games and new IPs and stuff really made for the new console. So that's a good thing. He also reiterated, as Herman Holst and Jim Ryan have done many times, that PlayStation is not abandoning story driven games. You know, the God of Wars, the Last of Us, the Ghost of Tsushima's, they're still making, he said, they're still making plenty of games like that because, you know, because of the games as a service initiative, people think for some reason that PlayStation is just going to go all games as a service or, you know, go in a completely direction. And this is like, I feel like the fourth time they said, they've said it, we are not abandoning single player games. We are going to keep making those. So a good thing. Um, also live service games will come from newly acquired teams and Sony uh, internal teams, you know, as we expected, he said, not all of the games as a service, will use original uh will be original ips um because we we heard about like what the horizon um pro horizon multiplayer project leaked so some of them are going to be new ips some of their them are going to be spinoffs of uh already uh established ips he said single player titles are still their most profitable titles or still will be the mo their most profitable titles i don't know if i believe that you don't you don't maybe he means right now but I don't know if that's going to necessarily be the case, depending on how successful the games as a service games are and uh, what and what they are, you know, so we, we will see that now. Here's 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 something bad. This is bad, bad, bad Herman Hulse, bad, bad, Mo more 
So it's possible that more cross-gen titles could come. He said it's a case-by-case -case basis. Now, we did see in the financial report, whenever it came out earlier this year, that there were going to be a few uh, cross-gen titles, a few games that still come out on PS4, um, PS5, right? And they they showed that by by this chart. And the chart of PS4 and PS5 games were very small. They were very insignificant but i need y'all to completely abandon this cross-gen nonsense i don't care if it's one game you need to stop this cut cut the cord bro you, you gotta stop this you got to move on especially when good old jimmy was the one that said we believe in generations now you can completely you continue to look completely dumb even if it's even if most of your games are not cross-gen and even, you know, if majority of them are next generation titles, even if you have one or even two, you still look dumb. Y'all, y'all got to let this go. I think the I think in the interview, he said, we don't want to completely abandon the people who are on PS4. But, bro, I think I saw the report. Don't know if this is true, but PlayStation plans to next year, PlayStation plans to uh, either have like, what, 30 million PS uh, fives manufactured or something like that. Either way, PlayStation fives are not hard to get anymore. If you want a PlayStation five, you can get one. No, they're not in stores. We know that. But if you want a PlayStation five, you can literally, I can get a PlayStation five right now, right? I already got two of them, but I, if I really wanted one, I can get one right now. So people who really want one have one or are in the process of getting one. The only people who do not have PS5s mainly are the casuals who are still looking for it to just magically, you know, randomly uh, appear on, on shelves at Walmart or Target. And they're like, oh, it's it's finally on a shelf. People who really want one went online and and have one. So. Even though, yeah, like there there there's evidence to the fact that um, people are waiting buy uh games right some people are avoiding buying games on ps4 and waiting till they get a ps5 so it's like bruh just release the game and whenever they get the release the game on ps5 only whenever they get the ps5 they'll just play it on ps5 forget these ps4 owners bruh forget them screw them i'm sorry screw them screw them kids forget them so this this that whole thing, y'all gotta stop, man. Y'all gotta stop. Because it does hold gaming back the longer y'all hold on to this. 2000 and I need 2023, like especially in the first half of it, to be the last time we really see uh cross-gen games from anybody. All right. So that's bad. Bad Herman Holst. Bad Jim Ryan. All right. Next one. Okay. Herman Holst mentions that. PC versions um, actually help PlayStation to invest more into bigger projects. I'm not going to debate that. I don't have a problem with, you know, uh, the PlayStation, P, uh, PlayStation games going to PC. There are those people who have an issue with it. I have nothing against that. I'm for PlayStation games going, going to PC. I buy them. So that's... That's a, that's a good thing to me. I think people who look at PlayStation games going to PC as a bad thing... I, that's that's really something personal to you and subjective, but I don't think you could literally sit here and objectively say, "Oh, this is a bad thing," right? So cool. That's that's a good thing. It leads to better projects. They can support other things. Cool. Here is something that's bad, but I get it, right? So Herman Holst confirms that live service games will launch on PC and PlayStation day one, right? Before we get into the whole discussion about, um, you know, overall PlayStation games going to PC day one, which they said is not happening right now. Let's talk about the multiplayer live service games first, the games as a service. The only reason why I'm against PlayStation games, multiplayer games going to PC is simply because I have not, there is, there is no anti-cheat that a PC gamer can't get around if they really want to, right? 
is is there really any like foolproof hacker proof rather anti cheat that's impenetrable because i haven't seen it from what i see when especially when it comes to these free to play games and that's the next that's the other thing i hope these games aren't free to play because i feel like the when you have a price on a game it's also a deterrent people are less likely to buy a game right tap into a game that they have to pay for and then cheat or hack into it get what i'm saying like it, it's just less of a barrier like oh the game is free oh so all i got to do is cheat and hack into it the game's already free but not to say that people won't pay for a game and then cheat but people are less likely to want to pay for a game in like in general because that's a barrier and then they got to cheat so it's 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 it, you know it's a it's a layer of protection so that's really my only my only gripe with it going to PC. It's not like I wouldn't play it on PC. I would play I would play, you know, these PlayStation games on PC case by case basis whatever I feel is the better platform to play it on. It's just the PC dudes who are very good at getting past anti-cheat systems. I don't know what, what anti-cheat PlayStation uses. I don't know what the best anti-cheat out there is. I don't know what the most popular one is. All I know is PC dudes, PC terrorists, as many like to call them, they are better than an, any anti-cheat out there. And yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll give, right? I'll give that most people, most of the time, you know, most of your interactions with people online you're not going to run into a cheater. Cool, right? Most that won't happen most of the time. It's not like it's super commonplace, but it happens. But it really only takes those one or two um situations that you run into a cheater to ruin your experience. And that's the and the, and the part of it is the 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 worst part of are the part of it is is you never really know when somebody's cheating. Sometimes they be obvious. But you never really know for sure. And that that part of it really irks me, bro. That really irks me. So that that's really what bothers me. It's just the cheaters, the hackers, these these scumbags, these undesirables that will come into this, that would come into this, these games and ruin the experience for everybody else because they are the scum of the earth. You know, they don't deserve to be on the planet. They suck. So that's what I'm worried about. You know, it's not, it's not actually about the games being on PC because I get it. You want the biggest audience to make these games as a service, service successful and survive. I don't care about it being on PC. I care about the cheaters. That's the only thing. So that's kind of like bad and good <sighs> torn on that. So I'm not going to I'm not going to praise them for that. I'm not going to not going to kill them for it either, but overall I'm leaning more towards I'm against that only because of those damn PC cheaters. Um okay, the, the last thing, uh last highlight from this interview is that he said there will be at least a year between PlayStation console and PC game releases with the exception to live service games, which I just talked about. Right. So your single your typical single player games from first party, he's saying that there's going to be at least a year. It could be more um, for them to go to PC. Now. There's there's that ongoing debate of if and when PlayStation games will ever go day one. And. So you got to you kind of got to ask them them putting these games on PC. And there being a year or more gap, is that intentional? Is that part of the pipeline? Is that the intentional pipeline? Like, could they actually do? Well, I'm sure they could. They could theoretically, you know, do it faster. Or right, if if they can do it faster, but is this just the way they want to do it? They want there to be a year gap because if this is something that they want. And there's nothing necessarily holding them back from putting it day one. Then this is just their their choice of how they want the pipeline to work. I think PlayStation has talked about 
you know, how um, how movie releases go. You put it in the movies, uh, you know, at, at the theater, and then, you know, uh, and then a few weeks or months later, it goes to streaming services. You might see it on um, on an airplane flight, and then, you know, it might show up on TV somewhere or free somewhere. But PlayStation and, you know, all the execs, Zach Yoshida, Herman, Jim Ryan have reiterated that their first party, you know, what they consider their premium titles, they don't want them in subscription services day one because that doesn't work for them. Now, I'm not one of those dudes who are who who says this will never happen or they'll never they'll never do it. I remember like this this debate about it has been going on for like I think like three years and it hasn't happened yet. So my th- my take is that I, I is that I think it's definitely possible, but right now, and I said this like three years ago, I don't think it's necessarily likely to happen soon. That was my take like three years ago. I don't think it's likely to happen soon, which which I was right about because now we're in 2022. Now, because there's there's a benefit to doing it that way. There's a benefit to these staggered releases, and. There, you can argue that there's some benefits to day releasing everything day one. It all depends on who you are. And one way works better for like Xbox, another one works better for like PlayStation. So I think they may they may stay that way. And as for as for the gamers, it really comes down to are you somebody who feels like, no, I have to play these games day one? So waiting a year to play a game is just not an option for me, which is my case. I'm not waiting the whole year to play a game I really want. But there's some people like PC gamers, like I call them the PC waiting race. They don't mind waiting. They're not like, you know, like, oh, no, I got to play this game. PC gamers are okay with waiting. So it's kind of like a it kind of. It's it's beneficial for all parties, honestly. If PlayStation feels it works for them, they do it. People who have PS5s can get the game day one. PC gamers who don't mind waiting can get the game when it comes out in a year. Also, PC slash PlayStation gamers, um, if they bought it day one, some of them double dip. I do that. So it it's kind of beneficial for all parties in, in that sense, kind of. So, Yeah. That's uh that's kind of my 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 take on that. But um the biggest highlight from this interview was definitely the games as a service going day one. And um I just I just don't trust those PC cheaters, man. I'm worried about them boys. Them them dudes are horrible people. They are degenerates. I just don't trust them. And of course there's the argument online about, you know, games as a service going to day one and the 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 whole debate and argument about PlayStation games going day one was never regarding games as a service. I mean, if we're being actually truthful about it, it was never about games as a service. I never wanted them to go day one because, like I said, cheaters, but I don't think anybody ever debated whether games as a service would go to PC day one. I think most people said it would and most people agreed it would. It was really the single player games. What exactly is the pipeline and the timeline um for those games but some people are conflating the two acting like it's all the same sure whatever but um yeah those are my thoughts let me know what y'all think thought about this uh herman holst interview um hit the like button hit the notification bell uh and uh yeah i think there was talk somebody somebody was saying that playstation had said uh that it was gonna they were gonna do two years from Play, from PlayStation to PC, but I could never, I, I looked it up. I couldn't find no article or video of them ever actually saying it, the, you know, the, the timeline is two years. Um, but if anybody could find that, drop that comment, uh, drop that link in the comment section, because obviously we're going to talk about all this on Weapon Wheel this Sunday. So let me know what y'all think. Catch y'all on the next video. Peace.